All right, I'm here with Chief of Donor and Alumni Relations, Steve Frazier. Steve used to be the Greco-Roman coach. You know, he's pretty much a Greco-Roman legend. First Olympic uh, or world title for, for USA was Steve's. Uh, coached the 2007 World Championship Greco-Roman team. Uh, and today we're going to talk about another little piece of history, and it's arguably the biggest upset in all of sports history, and that's Rulon Gardner taking out the experiment, Alexander Karelin, at the 2000 Sydney Olympics. And uh, just a little back background on Karelin. He had been undefeated for 13 years and hadn't had a point, a point scored on him within six years. Um, he's probably the, the greatest Greco-Roman wrestler of all time. Do you think that's a fair, yeah, fair assessment? Yeah, I would say that he, he or, yeah, he's probably the greatest or considered the greatest or... Some people would argue that Lopez from Cuba uh, is going to surpass him, but not in titles, that's for sure. So um, so can you talk a little bit about Karelin's dominance during that time period and just, you know, what, what a competitor he was? Yeah, of course, uh, like you said, for 13 years, Karelin hadn't uh, been beaten by anyone. Every tournament that he wrestled in, he heard the Russian national anthem, you know, play. Um, that included three Olympic gold medals and nine world championship gold medals. And so he his career was unbelievable, uh, very impressive. And um, and this thing with Rulon in the Sydney Olympic Games was his going to be his last final victory in their hopes which would give him four Olympic gold medals. And, you know, Putin was excited about the parade when he got back. And uh, and I think Kissinger was there to watch it. And there was a, a lot of famous people, their eyes on this final match where Karelin would win his fourth gold medal. Anyways, we heard the, not the Russian national anthem, but we heard the U.S. national anthem after that match because Rulon is the man he just wrestled so great and and upset alexander Karelin. so maybe outside of rulon and a couple american coaches what what did anybody think about rulon's chances to beat Karelin? well no one thought no one probably thought that rulon could beat Karelin. not even rulon himself i think he'll be the first to tell you that he he wasn't sure he could beat him um I'm not I'm not saying that I knew knew it all, but I thought he could beat him. And I know Dan Chandler, also one of our coaches at the time uh for that Olympic Games, we both thought that uh Rulon could beat Karelin. You know, Karelin, you know, was getting weaker in a few areas, a little slower maybe, you know, not taking anything away from this. He was still the man. But um we saw some weaknesses where um Rulon actually had strength. You know, and one of Rulon's biggest strengths was his cardiovascular conditioning. He wore out every wrestler he wrestled. He he just was a grinder, and um, you know, and and when it comes down to it, the way he beat Karelin was two ways. One, he beat him by by out conditioning him, and by defending Karelin's favorite move, the reverse lift. You know that he was throwing everybody with. And uh, we can go more into that if you want uh, later. But uh, yeah, it was it was exciting. So how do you get an athlete to to train to beat the best in the world and to like make himself believe at least a little bit that he can hang with this guy? Because no, no one in six years had scored a point on him. Yeah. So you know, scoring a point on him, let alone beating on him, beating him, you know, that's a that's a tall order. <laughs> Well, you know, as a coach, um, you know, with Rulon and with all my athletes, um, try to uh, try to get them to believe that they can accomplish anything that they set their mind to, and the way they do it is by focusing on the preparation, the training, the blood, sweat, and tears that it takes to get to that level. And Rulon. You know, Rulon is a great example of someone who was willing to pay the price in every way. He's one of the hardest working athletes that I have had the pleasure to coach. And um, he was stubborn. He was tough. He was mentally tough. 
all of it. So it wasn't too hard to to get Rulon to believe that he could be the best because he was beating just about everybody. Uh, he hadn't won a medal yet, but uh, but he hadn't beat Krellin. Krellin beat him 5-0 a couple years before that and about broke his back. He lifted him in his favorite move, the reverse lift. And Rulon defended it, you know, like no one usually could. And he, you know, it's hard to explain on camera, but he arched and and actually, when when Corellan threw him, Ruan landed right on his face and his chest instead of going over to his back, and that torqued his torqued his back, about broke his back. But that's just an example of how tough and stubborn Ruan is. So, so what did what did you guys do specifically to prepare for Corellan at the at the Olympics? So at the end, I mean, when we were the, if you're talking about the final match preparation before the match. We were in the pra or in the in the warm up room with Corellan. Corellan was walking around on the other side of the warm up room where all the wrestlers warm up, and we were warming Rulon up and talking to him. And and um, basically, what we tried to do was focus on the things that Rulon can't control, could control during the match. You can't control always if you're going to win or lose. Um, but you can control your actions during the match. So we we focused on those actions. And we knew Rulon was going to have to stop Corellan's reverse lift. And what uh, Chandler and I had noticed in the previous matches that Corellan had wrestled in, in Sydney in that tournament, he, was, um, he had a combination. He would go to reverse lift the guy and if the guy would turn into him to defend too hard, Corellan would hip into him and, and turn him over to his back uh, with, like, the the counter to that defense. And so um, we decided to uh, suggest to Rulon that he bait him by really defending hard, to, but not too much to where he was going to get countered to his back, but really bait him. To, to try to stop the lift and let him try to bump him over. So we had we had Rulon focus on that, and then we had Rulon focus on uh, his uh, how he was going to be uh, how he was going to out uh, condition him, out move him, out physical him. You know, be real physical and get him tired. So uh, end of the match, one zero. Rulon wins. Uh, Corellin breaks the clinch. Uh, when did you know? you know, in the match, like, okay, he's in it. Like, this is going to be a fight. He can win this one. Well, I knew he was in it from the start, but you never know. One one second, one one inch mistake, and, you know, and Crown could score four points, you know. So uh, he's he's that explosive, that powerful with his reverse lift and with other techniques he has too. So you never know. But, um I mean, even in, even in fact, when they went to the clinch, uh, back then the the rule the rule was the clinch rule. Um, when they when Corellan broke his hands, and and violated the the rule there, the referee actually gave the point to Corellan. They they said Rulon broke his hands first, and and we protested it. They had to go back to the film and in front of everybody up on the big screen. Everyone could see that Corellan broke his hands first, so they had to then give the point back to to Rulon. So even at that point, we weren't sure what was going to happen, you know, because, you know, sometimes referees see things differently than the coaches see, as you may guess. So, so yeah, we didn't know until the very end what was, what was going to happen. Uh, do you remember the emotions or the feelings you had after that match and, and you know, what Rulon was going through and, oh, yeah. and you know, just, just the atmosphere of, of being present and, you know, an active participant in the biggest upset in sports history? Yeah, it was exciting. I mean, it, we were all kind of in shock a little bit, um, you know, because there was so much hype about uh, Corellan getting his fourth Olympic gold medal and going down in history with those four gold medals and undefeated in his entire career. Um, there were a lot of Russians shocked. I got some great photos of right after the match and you can see you can see the, the people in the stands, the people that were excited 
with their arms raised and, you know, happy. And you can see a lot of the Russians or maybe some Europeans that really wanted to see Krellin win, they were devastated, you know. And so, uh, yeah, it's one of those moments in sports history where, you know, I don't think I'll ever have another sports moment that matches it. It's so It was so, so thrilling. Um, in the last five seconds, Karellen kind of conceded, like he stood up, he backed off and just let the time expire. Uh, what, what did he seem like after the match? Did he just accept it and, you know, went about his way still being, you know, one of the legends of the sport? I, I think so. I mean, obviously he was very, very disappointed, you know, um, he had probably, he was feeling the pressure too, probably, um, so he was very disappointed. He probably felt maybe like he let his comrades down. But um, uh, he, yeah, in the in the last five seconds, he kind of quit trying, I think, uh, was interesting to me too. But I think he was tired. I think Rulon had exhausted him. And uh, with all due respect to the great champion, Alexander Karelin, he was tired, you know, and Rulon's a very tough person to score on, you know. Rulon was... Uh, very very strong you know uh obviously wrestler um so yeah i i but 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 the thing about alexander Krellin, he uh was a great sportsman a great sportsmanship uh i've met him on a variety of uh in a variety of different situations since then and he's always been very kind to me and uh and has never been negative in any way. He I mean he took his he took that defeat, you know, as a as a great champion and, and acted that way. He was he's a great guy. So uh what would you say if if, you know, there is one a takeaway that younger wrestlers or or, you know, really anyone can take from Rulon's story and uh, you know, Rulon's gold medal? Well the one thing you can take from Rulon's story is you know, anyone, and I truly believe this, uh, anyone can accomplish anything they really desire if they if they do what they need to do to, to, to you know, if they do the work. And Rulon is the greatest example of that, a farm boy from Wyoming. Um, you know, the, I think the 11th, ninth or 11th kid in his family, the youngest, always getting picked on by everybody. Um, and... Um, He'd be the first to tell you he, um, you know, he, he um, you know, he always did learn things real quickly. It took him a little longer to, to learn things sometimes. But once he learned them and you put that together with his tenacity and his and his stubbornness, anyone can win. So that's what I would tell tell anyone is if you want it bad enough, you can do it if you if you if you pay the price. You know, and you believe it. All right. Thanks, Steve. You're welcome.